good morning it is two days later because yesterday i wanted to give my hands a bit of a break and my body a little bit of a break so i took the day off and i didn't actually work on the rest of the framing structure but i'm happy to report that it is still standing the braces that i put together worked really well it was super windy last night and this didn't move so aces Yesterday I took some time to go and explore two of the river beaches close to me and they were both absolutely beautiful so I can see myself spending a little bit more time there on some of the hot days coming up when I don't have too much work to do. Unfortunately today I have quite a bit of other things to get doing such as watering the trees and all the plants that need water today and that usually takes about an hour out of my day but then what i am going to try and do today is try and finish the rest of the base frame and the support structures going upwards the vertical structures and we'll see how far i can get and how much time i have to just finish that but if i get that much done i'll be happy so let's get going it's girl meets farm Right, I'm back from watering all the, the plants and I've so far just roughly laid out and that's not something any carpenter wants to hear, I'm sure. I've roughly roughly laid out where the middle beams, foundational beams are going to go and um, I'm okay if it doesn't line up 100%, it's just temporary and I just want to get some kind of shelter structure up so that I can shower <laughs> in more safety i guess shower more secluded i guess um these two end beams are not actually staying here it's just so that i can kind of roughly lay out the foundational beams a little bit more straight so um i'm getting to that point where i'm overthinking everything i'm like i don't know if any of you guys are like this but i feel like i've i've just gone in and went ahead and done this thing now and i've gotten the basics up and now i'm starting to overthink every little thing that i'm doing and i'm worried that i'm not doing it correctly but i'm just going to keep going at it and i'm going to just see if i can get something up look at the end of the day i'm building some kind of box <laughs> and as long as i keep heading in that direction i'm sure or i'm hoping it will be okay let's see what i can do as I mentioned, I feel like I'm overthinking all of this, but I feel like the back section is quite long and it will need additional support down the middle. Although what I'm going to be doing might be taking about eight centimeters of space away from the middle or from the whole structure, I feel like having two big support beams right down the middle will actually help with that. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be nailing to like the middle support beams to the foundational beam that's going to go on the floor so then they will stand upright like that and then when i put the cladding on there's additional places for them to go i do have rippers as well that i'm either going to be placing the same as i've done on the sides down the middle structure which is possibly a good idea now that i'm thinking about it I don't know if this is right. I'm just going to go ahead with it because I think in my mind that makes sense. Whether it's correct, I don't know. managed to get this flipped around with great difficulty but three of the vertical beams are attached now I'm gonna attach the last vertical beam now and then I have to try and get it lifted upright and move in there as the middle section of the structure I probably then have to just tie those together but I might do that with one long ripper on each side. I don't know, let's try and get this done first. Let's just nail the last one together and then just take it step by step.
three attempts later and turning the pole around the other way I managed to get the nail in on this end now four of the posts are in I need to tighten them up then I need to swing it vertically and put it back in its position <laughs> okay wish me luck all right this may or may not work <laughs> here goes nothing It's the end of, I think, the second day of the outhouse build and uh, it's the end of the day and uh, I think I made good progress. Look, I had a lot of chores to do today. I've been running in and out and in between I've been trying to spend time on, on this build. To be honest, I would rather be doing this than anything else I did today, but it is what it is. I am pretty tired. I'm exhausted. It was a really hot day again today, and I've been working in the sunshine again when I was outside all day. Um, I think I made some good progress, and tomorrow the last thing I need to do is to just tie up the top again with some what they call rippers. Basically, it's a piece of plank that's going to just like these guys tie the top sections all together and then I think I may be ready to maybe start putting up some of the cladding on the side and then I can do the floor when I get maybe a little bit higher with the, the cladding and then I can start putting maybe the toilet in and measuring out the toilet to go inside there and hopefully <laughs> I can get all of this done in the next couple of days because what I haven't told you guys is that on the weekend is my birthday so I'm gonna go out and celebrate a little bit so I'm not gonna be doing any work on my birthday except driving very far to go and have sushi <laughs> um, as a little reward for myself and my gift to myself and then I will be continuing with this build again next week and let me show you what I've done <laughs> So the, all the base beams are down, the corner beams are all up, they're all tied structurally for its structural integrity together with these guys and these guys go all the way around to connect them all. So effectively what's going to happen is the door, Tobias is now chasing one of the cats, we can't see him. Anyway, this is going to be the entrance, so the door is going to be in here. I'm hoping to put the toilet down here and then over here we've got another little entryway doorway we can go through here and this little corner is going to be the shower over here and maybe if I'm feeling very artistic and optimistic on the day I will also put a little window on both sides of the loo and 
of the shower so we can have a loo and a shower with a bit of a view. So this will, will not have a door, there will only be one door in and out, oops, this way. And I do want to just give another shout out to Bluetti. I have been, it's been coming in so handy. I have literally been using it with almost everything on this build. Not the huge beams or not to cut the huge beams, but all the other pieces of wood that I've needed cut down to size. I have used my little jigsaw with the Bluetti and it's been a real lifesaver. I have really enjoyed having that around for sure. So here we are. Let me show you, give you one more look as to where we are today. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for a little bit more. <laughs> so far today, the boulder, uh, <laughs> it looks a little bit wonky, but you know what? Whatever. I'm going to call it the wonky loo because look, as long as it serves its purpose, I think I'll be happy. I ran out of these small what they refer to here as rippers and I had to use some of the old ones that were lying in the storeroom that was used for my insulation part of the roof and the wood is really not great it's a little bit bent and the nails don't go through it at all so it's really not the best wood I think to be using at all but as I ran out of other wood I need to resort to that I only have to do two more pieces on that side and that side this way to tie the structure together and then we can maybe start with cladding and maybe even the floor i would have liked to put some more support structures in on the sides maybe z ways maybe more across i don't think i need more rippers to actually do the tongue and groove wood that i'm going to be doing on the back wall as um or maybe i do i don't know Oh, I'm going to have to just see and, and otherwise I don't know what I'm going to do because the wood yard's closed so I won't be able to get more wood anyway. I'm just going to keep going at it like I've been doing and just hope for the best and hope that uh, it will at least be a usable structure. Whilst uh, I've been doing this this morning, I had some, some help. My uh, trusted helper came in to, well trusted helper and he sits to buy it he's keeping a, an eye on the dogs and uh, he sits here at the gate while I'm building it's really cute actually and just uh, wants love and attention but really all he wants is food to be honest he calls me every time his food bowl is is nearing empty and today he's already had breakfast twice all right let's uh, let's show you what this guy has done today let me go through here um, I had strimmed this bit, so let's duck through here. Alrighty. And uh, he's managed to strim through all of these sections. It's amazing. So it's all been done. It's all cleared out now. And now I can go down. I mean, this is a really big section, guys. But now I can go down all of these and just tidy up all of the the seeker vines <laughs> and uh, tuck them back on the the trellis and uh, yeah just neaten and tidy things up i'm gonna get back to this once i've done or at least finished more of that outhouse build but i'm so stoked this would have taken me more than a week i was doing about two rows and look the rows are quite significant I was maybe getting to two rows a day before I started with the art house build. So uh, he's managed to do three quarters that I hadn't done in two hours. Isn't that amazing? I'm so, so stoked. I'm so, so happy. That has saved me so, so, so much time. And now I can get back to the art house. <laughs> Look at this one. And... um just tidy up the vines when I get time. Let's get back to the outhouse build.
it's the next day, although I'm wearing the same clothes. And uh, well, I guess if you hand wash your clothing, you don't mind wearing the same clothes, especially if you're going to be getting dirty in them in any case. So I am in the same clothes, but it is the next day. It is Friday today and we are continuing with the bulb. So far I've done the side beams at the very, very tippy top. I now need to do the perpendicular ones at the top, in the middle and on the side. But I ran out of wood, I ran out of all these rippers, so I had to rely on the stuff that was left over from the insulation. Unfortunately, the stuff is these these beams or these rippers as they they call them here are all bent and it's been so hard to get it onto the structure because I don't know why this wood is different or if it is different or what happened because the nails are really struggling to get through this one. The wood that I had delivered, the batch that I had delivered was really really good. There were one or two where I struggled to get the nails through but for the most part 90-95% of that wood was 100% fine. It seems like every single beam that I've tried to nail in I've had issues with and every single time the nails have just bent and I can't take it down because it's already up on the structure. Oh, it's been a bit of a mission and the bend in the wood is also not great because it doesn't make it easier to get it on there. So the whole structure seems a little bit wobbly so from now on it's going to be called the wonky loo. There we are. I'm going to see how far I can get and then just put the the last four sections if I even have that much wood to to do of the roof and see where, see where we are when we get there at that time. Since my Bluetti is on the dehydration today, I have to resort to old school labor. <laughs> I'm trying to use the, the straightest ones I can, but I don't know if this is going to translate on camera, but you can see these guys aren't straight and these are the best ones that I can find. This wood is in, in such bad condition that uh, I've decided I'm going to give this a wood treatment as well against all the parasites and the fungus and, and stuff like that. It really doesn't look very good so I'm going to oil that and then get on with some other work Come back when this is dry and continue.
managed to fit the perpendicular ones, the four beams, and as you can see, I don't know if this is going to translate on camera, but they're so bendy, like some of the screw, like some of the nails wouldn't grow in, as I mentioned before, but you can actually see how warped this wood is, which made it really, really difficult. But it is what it is, it's up there now, and hopefully it does its job. After I did those last four beams, I also added some of the cladding just to see what it's going to look like. But unfortunately, this is the end of this week's video. What I still have left to do is all the cladding all the way on the outside, the floor on the inside, and then I was going to do tongue and groove wood on the inside just to make things look a little bit prettier on the inside. And of course, the shower needs a base, it needs an outlet pipe, and it needs some kind of plastic, corrugated plastic is what I had in mind, along the walls to keep it protected from the water as well. But we're here at this point, so check back next week to see how far I've come. Thank you for watching, see you next week.